So today uh, I would like to present you uh, my experimentations on twine closing and testing its possibility in mesolithic. So does it work? No? Why? Why doesn't it work? So, uh, some years ago, uh, I was trying to recreate some fine clothing, uh, and I have used as an inspiration uh, anthropomorphic engravings on the orcs bone from uh, Remoxgard settlement, Mesolithic. And so, uh, as a vis visual source, uh, I thought it would be uh, it was rather good. And uh, after making the clothes. Uh, I made a revising experiment. Uh, as the archaeological basis of my tests, uh, there, there was a find from Shantoi settlement to be, dated to uh, Middle Late Neolithic, and it was lime bust and it was twine. On the right, you see the scheme, technical scheme of twine's uh, sickness and whatever. We ca can uh, discuss it uh, during the break. Also, I have compared it uh, with uh, extant uh, twines from uh, Europe, uh, both found and reconstructed. It's not all finds, you know, and I know it. So, but we have quite a short time to discuss all them. And afterwards, I made uh, drawings uh, trying to identify different constructions uh, and shapes and uh, forms of clothing as garments. You can see it here. Uh, here you see uh, some pictures of making process. Uh, I have used hemp uh, fiber a substitute for lime bust because for making a big cloth you need quite a lot of material. And now I have started also uh, a big piece of lime bust. I have managed to uh, gain enough of it, so it will be so, so some. Uh, it will be pre presented some years later, maybe. And also I was testing uh, influence of ready-made yarn uh, if, uh, for efficiency of twining. Uh, I have chosen to make the cloth uh, in proportions to human body. Let's say as the length is like this, it, it can co cover you from ground up to chin. Uh, as I assume that uh, such cloths were of multi-purpose. We are multi-purpose and they could be used uh, either for clothing uh, and as different garments and also, let's say, for matting, gas matter and all kinds of stuff. And those pieces uh, became fully wearable as we do wear them uh, on the living days, uh, the days of living history in uh, archaeology in Kernave, in our Neolithic settlement. And uh, so, after presentations of the first part, I would like to go back to that oryx bone, this uh, so-called uh, uh, Mesolithic family. Uh, I was trying to find out if my source of inspiration was right, uh, and uh, there were some twine clothing in Mesolithic, and to find out uh, some ways of uh, the, the garments depicted. <coughs> so, uh, I used my three clothes. Uh, I have managed to persuade two models, <laughs> male and female, uh, and I made a photo shoot at uh, my uh, exhibit, uh, The Cozy Stone Age, which was in uh, 2012. So, we, uh, f first of all, we tried uh, some freestyle styling, uh, trying to find out as many ways as possible to uh, style, your, your, style yourself in uh, those clothes in s some reasonable uh, ways, as we could, as we could think of, about. So you see some male variations, and then uh, female, also wearing one garment, two garments,
or all three pieces at once. So you see the variety is uh, pretty, uh, pretty large. And so the point was uh, to find, uh, try to find the match uh, of the picture fig figures and uh, possible ways of wearing the cloth. So, <laughs> as you see, <laughs> some, 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 <laughs> some uh, do look la similar, like. Uh, and so uh, I attempt to claim that uh, those uh, parallel lines indicate twining, because the actual qualities of the cloths uh, show the same. And you see the lines of, of twine, there are distinctive, uh, as the distinctive feature, visual feature of the cloth. But on the right uh, figure, uh, we have um, opposite directions on the figure is going downwards, and uh, on the cloth, actual cloth, it's uh, opposite. So either it was uh, another way of wearing it, but this was the only way uh, for having your hands out, <coughs> as we could think about or off. Uh, afterwards, we can try, uh, because I have all the cloths here, to try, uh, so, so we can test it once more. Uh, also, I presume uh, it might be uh, a kind of um, school's visual mem memory, as it's quite common in uh, prehistoric art, because let's say the our heads are not triangle. <laughs> and so uh, I think that uh, the, the depicted figures, all of them, uh, wore some uh, long, uh, big, uh, quite large uh, rectangular cloth as a cloak in several ways, and you get uh, the best correspondence in the silhouette uh, and lines when standing just in profile, having something to cover your shoulders and putting your hands like this. Ah, I'm cool. <laughs> and also the, so some uh, little uh, dancing figure. Also, uh, I presume that uh, some of uh, two of the figures uh, maybe wore some shorter clothes uh, underneath. As you see, the uh, the uh, bottom lines matching, even that diagonal one. That was fascinating. I was surprised that it, it was so. So, I, uh, I think that at least uh, two figures depicted wore fine clothing. So my theory was right, I think. Uh, however, I have no clear evidence for the mid uh, middle three figures because they are uh, patterned in a different way. So either it was some fine clothes or it uh, some leather or uh, soft fur, <coughs> thin fur, so something, something flexible and soft. As uh, I also tested uh, some wrapped uh, wrapping for uh, analyzing figures from Vexelbach, or also Mesolithic, and you see that uh, lines on the back, and you get that line uh, only if you uh, wrap yourself in a cloth which is soft and flexible. So, thank you for your attention. Oh, my God.